Hello and welcome to TI Now. I'm John Jacobs. We're here live from Mobile World Congress Americas 2017. We're here today with Peter Kosak, who is Executive Director of Urban Mobility and Maven with General Motors Corporation. Thanks very much for joining yeah, us. Thanks Peter. for having me. Great title. Can you tell us a bit about your role at GM? Sure. Uh, my role actually started about five years ago when the company realized that there were some big changes afoot. And so at the outset, I had to, with a small team, kind of take stock of some of the major trends that are going on, urbanization and policy changes, uh, technology, competition, demography, and uh, sort out what a company like General Motors with 115 years of design, build, sell experience globally in automotive should be doing. Um, and uh, so we did that and developed a business plan and, and uh, that's what's brought us to this point after having launched a, a new brand for transportation as a service um, and also working on things like a, autonomous and, and all. Um, it really is uh, trying to extend our core business uh, into areas where we can provide access to mobility either beyond ownership or instead of ownership. When you think about autonomous vehicles uh, as a service, uh, we'd like to talk a bit about that, about what the, what's the drive behind that and then what are some of the inhibitors uh, that might be slowing that down? Yeah, it's a, autonomous is almost like magical right now. Yeah. I think because it, it really captures the imagination of consumers and policy makers and whole industries. Um, I think that uh, people get it. They, they, they understand the, how autonomous vehicles uh, see everything all at once and can be, have better acuity and be safer than human drivers. You know, they're, they're on and paying attention all the time and can react quickly. I think they understand how how not being burdened with the task of driving, they can get their time back for whatever they need to do. Um, I think they realize that decision making, the routes that are being traveled and all can be optimized. So I think consumers realize that uh, while it's true that many love driving in some situations, many feel like driving is a real burden in other situations. And, and I think they, they're excited by the, 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 the prospect of autonomous. And I think that's true of policymakers as well. I think that they realize that providing greater access especially underserved uh, areas <clears throat> and um, uh, the opportunity to integrate with mass transit systems and these kinds of things. I, I think everyone generally is, is very excited about, about the possibilities. And just focus on that demographically and also geographically for a moment with regard to autonomous vehicles. Are you seeing distinctions of user groups by, by age or by income level or experience? Yeah, I think you even see that pre-autonomous. Um, you know, even in today's marketplace, as you think about life stages, you know, there's a lot said today about millennials and how you know, they're not that interested in driver's licenses or not that interested in owning a vehicle or, or, or can't afford to own a vehicle. Um, then, you know, they, but we've seen a lot of data that, you know, as they have families, you know, they want the certainty and the access of ownership. They want a vehicle in their driveway and they want to, you know, have a car seat in it and they want to be able to have their stuff in it and that sort of thing. And then as you get to become an empty nester or even older than that, you know, having a vehicle can be a bit of a burden again. You're worried about maintenance and insurance and those kinds of things. And you want different types of vehicles for the different things that you want to do. Um, so I think as you go through life stage for sure, uh, needs evolve, and um, and I think automotive has been feeding into that for a long time. I think the same will be true in autonomous world as well, where people will want what they need, uh, you know, when they want it, and and you'll have um, a variety of different uh, vehicles and a, and a variety of different ways to access them um, as well. And so, do you see? Does GM see this uh, more as an urban phenomenon? or is it, uh, is it sort of regardless of the actual geography? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think that uh, at first you'll see autonomous take root in congested urban environments. Um, I think that's where the benefits will be greatest at the outset um, mm -hmm. in terms of efficiency and safety and demand um, as well. And I think they'll come first in the form of taxi fleets, which can be you know, controlled and managed, um, which is going to be important at the onset of a, an important technology area. Um, I think beyond that, the the benefits of autonomous are just as great, though, on a dark country road, you know, um, uh, or on a long highway where people get tired, um, just as, as well. But I think at the outset, it'll be more in urban environments. And I think we also see electrification as playing an important role. You know, we think that electrified vehicles, electric vehicles, like our Chevy Bolt, for example, are a good host 
uh, for an autonomous vehicle because they allow you to set up the general arrangement differently than a traditional vehicle where you put the engine here and the seats here and the powertrain here. You can, with an electric vehicle, you have more freedom in how you can lay out the vehicle. There's a lot of power on board to run processing and, and, and uh, sensors and that kind of thing. And then also in urban environments, that's where air quality issues are the greatest and where cities are really looking for more carbon-free miles. So we think the combination of shared through taxi fleets, autonomous for system integration and safety, and uh, electrified vehicles will all be where this starts and takes root. You mentioned uh, earlier, uh, and, and part of your title is Maven, mm -hmm. the leader of the Maven program. Can you tell us a bit about that, but also and in the context of personalization of sure. the experience of driving. Yeah, and just as, as context, I think there are really, at General Motors, four strategic imperative areas, and two of them are kind of support technology areas, and they are advanced propulsion, so electrification today, fuel cells in the future. Um, connectivity, embedded connectivity, and all the value that can come out of that in terms of running systems, vehicle systems, um, and that was something we had started 20 years ago with OnStar and have a lot of experience with. And then these two areas, shared mobility and autonomous. And, and we really have these two areas going in parallel. Autonomous development with cruise automation uh, here in San Francisco and with our product development team in, in Detroit. Um, and the last is Maven, which is our in-market transportation as a service uh, platform, essentially, where we're providing vehicles to people uh, for personal use or to uh, gig workers to drive for Lyft or Uber or Instacart to make income. Um, that's our platform to provide access to automotive um, as an alternative typically to, uh, to uh, ownership. And that, back to the demographic question, has been very interesting for us because about 80% of our members are millennials. Mm. You know, they are the ones with whom this is resonating greatest um, at the outset. Um, and, and finally, Peter, if I may, if you think about into the future a bit from a new services to be offered perspective, uh, do you have some vision as to what those might be or what demands might be coming down the, right, down the road? Sure, we, we, back to the word platform, which right. I think is sort of the buzzword these days. But I think the, there is no other word to describe how things are emerging. Um, we look at this as, as having sort of platform dimensions in two ways. One, as I, I just mentioned, is um, providing access and also inviting people onto the platform who own vehicles who want to gain income from them or reduce their costs of ownership through letting them in the kinds of services that we're providing. The second platform area though is, is really an extension of kind of what's brought us to this point in automotive. Um, you know, we introduced OnStar 20 years ago and that brought concierge services with navigation and the ability to get help from a call center agent and safety features and that kind of thing. Over the last 10 years, people are now bringing content into vehicles in the form of their smartphones, so apps, and they're able to personalize their experience with things like natural voice recognition, and that sort of thing. As you extend that into autonomous world, uh, you really can start to personalize, and depending on the length of your trip, and where you're going and what you're doing, the opportunity for you to provide services to people who are no longer burdened with having to drive is huge. It's, you know, as we were discussing earlier, that's like a room in your home that you walk into that then takes you somewhere else. Right. And the question is, what content do you want in that room so you can make the best use of your time uh, when you're actually being transported to another location? And I think that can be a huge platform area to provide value um, so people make the best use of their time. Peter Kosick, thank you very much for joining us Thanks, today. Thanks, John. Thanks thank for you. having me. Appreciate it. Thank you.